So um, you're up against this monolithic galactic system which has decades and decades of experience of absolutely obliterating, terminating family rights here in the province of Ontario. What can you do to try and improve your position a little bit? Well, one of the things is you can look at a document uh, back in 2012, we became aware that the Ministry of Children and Youth Services had a policy, it's about 130 pages long, which um, guide or determine the rules in regards to the Children's Aid Societies providing disclosure to the notes that they make and use against families. That policy is called Ministry Case Information Disclosure Policy, and you can Google it. It's at fixcas.com, undisclosed disclosure policy. I put in a freedom of information request, and we got the policy, and we posted it. Remember, Ontario's the only province in Canada where the child protection th authorities are exempt from freedom of information. So normally, if you were in any other province, you could do a straightforward freedom of information request and get their records, disclosure. That Those records would be redacted, but they would still be very, very valuable. The other process is to put in a records motion in court. But the average person here in Ontario, even people who have graduated from universities, are going to find that to be a very, very difficult thing to do. So, when the Child and Family Services Act was made law back in 1985, the Government of Ontario, Ministry of Community and Social Services, created this 130-page policy called the, the Case Information Disclosure Policy, and that's what the Children's Aid Societies have to adhere to during disclosure. So get on to FixCAS.com and look at that document. What's going to happen is you're going to follow the process laid out in that policy. You basically have to write a letter claiming the disclosure, sign it. You have to go to the Children's Aid Society, show two pieces of photo ID, and that begins the process. Very, very possibly the Children's Aid Society will choose to ignore the policy because policies are not binding and they can choose to ignore it if they want to. Then, what you do as a parent is you appeal to something called the Child and Family Services Review Board. The Child and Family Services Review Board will schedule a hearing in your home or in your hometown. They will come, a three-member board, and they will do a hearing where you can argue your right to get those records. And that's where that knowledge is required. Because being able to litigate, being able to argue, make submissions, examine, cross-examine, enter evidence, do motions, all of that is what individual Ontarians have to know today. Especially if you're low income. It shouldn't be that way. It's that way because the administration of justice in the province of Ontario is a nasty and disgusting cesspool, cowardly, ignorant, swearing an oath to the Queen of England, faulty billionaire, has never faced an election, and you all swear an oath to her. If the province of Ont if the administration of, pro of justice in the province of Ontario wasn't like that, you, the people, would be able to have normal lives. Maybe know a little bit of the law here and there, but it's not like that today. You have to have university professor, political science, law, journalism, criminology, sociology, social work knowledge, just to survive, just facing the potential that you might be brought to court someday. So that's one of the important things that you can do. Get that document.
document and get that disclosure. Whatever you do, record the living heck out of your legal aid Ontario lawyer. Every single time you meet with that lawyer, you secretly record those conversations. And when that lawyer or the Children's Aid Society worker looks at you and they say, are you recording me? You put on your sweetest, most uh, cherub-like face and you look them right in the eye and you say, no, of course not. I might not be a lawyer, but uh, personally I would play it up. And I would say something like, I might not be a lawyer, but I, I know at least that it's not lawful to record in the province of Ontario. Have a little bit of fun with it, but record them. Now, are you allowed to record inside courthouses? Most definitely you are. You can record your conversations with the courthouse staff, the administrators, and you had better, because some of the most ignorant bureaucrats in the province of Ontario are courthouse staff. I'm telling you right now. Of course they are. They are completely and totally unaccountable. You cannot go to the ombudsman to have them investigated. You cannot put in a freedom of information request to investigate them yourselves. Of course the, the courts of Ontario, their administrators, have become ugly and arrogant. On top of it, they swear an oath to the Queen of England. Naturally, anybody who swears an oath to the multi-billionaire foreigner Queen of England is not going to be somebody who's down to earth or approachable or a regular Joe or Josephine type of person. Of course they're going to be arrogant. It's part and parcel. It goes along with it. Elitist. Westminster, Buckingham Palace. Now, so when you go to the courthouses, you have the right to record your court appearances. And guess what your legal, your legal aid Ontario lawyer will say to you when you suggest that you want to start recording your court appearances? Your legal aid Ontario lawyer will get into an incredible huff you will see his panties start to go up his butt as you're speaking to him. He will become incredibly disturbed and he will say, under no circumstances am I going to represent somebody who wants to record their court appearances. Even though Section 136.2b of the Courts of Justice Act, also Section 183.1 of the Criminal Code of Canada, establishes your right to record your court appearances, your legal aid Ontario lawyer will get so pissy when you say that you want to do that, 